Ave Maria. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ave Maria. St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, tells us that when Christ ascended into heaven, he distributed gifts. To some, he gave the gift of the apostleship, apostles. To others, they were preachers. Still others were teachers. And all the other gifts. In the letter to the Corinthians, he speaks about the gifts that have been given us. We have the gift of faith, some, a gift that we should be very careful to cultivate. We have the gift, of course, of charity that also needs to be watched over very carefully and cultivated. We have what are called the charismatic gifts, the gifts of tongues, the, the gift of healing, and so on. But the first question we have to ask is, what is a gift. What does the gift mean? To whom do we give gifts? Why do we give gifts? I think immediately we would agree that we give gifts to those whom we love. Why do we give them gifts? We give them gifts, not because they need them. For instance, uh, we can give a very rich person a gift. They don't need it, but we would give it anyway. Sometimes we can give gifts that have no value, such as a child who brings his mother a little flower, something he picked off the lawn, and he gives it to her as a gift. It has no value, yet it does have a great deal of value. It has no value in itself, but it has a value in what it represents. So what does a gift represent? Essentially, love. So every gift we receive is in fact an expression of love. But what do we when we love, what do we really want to give? Is it a ring, even if it has a diamond on it? Is it a car? Is it a flower? Is it a, a card? What do we really want to give? And I think we'll agree. We want to give that which is most valuable to ourselves. In other words, we want to give ourselves. Our Lord himself says, a man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friend. To give the gift of your life for someone whom you love, there's nothing more you can do. And so when we start to understand what giving means, and in particular, what a gift symbolizes, we will then appreciate the great gift we ourselves have been given. Because, again, St. Paul tells us, why do we boast of anything? Have you got, have you received, have you, do you possess anything you have not received. Everything we possess, we have received it. We didn't create it. We received it. And we received it from none other than God himself. And so the first thing God gives us is life. Life itself. His greatest gift. And in giving us life, God has given us himself because we are made in the image and the likeness of God. So God has given to each of us himself. And sometimes we don't even realize that or appreciate it, what a great gift life itself is. 
And in our world, where we see lives treated so shabbily, so commonly, so cheaply, we are becoming insensitive to the value of every human life. The value of each and every individual human life, whether in the womb, whether as a child, whether as a mature adult, whether as someone who has many years on their shoulder, whether someone who is sick, someone who is disabled, someone who is challenged in any way, they possess this essential gift, life itself, a gift from God, which should be, which ought to be cherished. Our Lord, as St. Paul says, has given us many gifts. And what do we notice about a gift? First of all, we do not give gifts that will injure the person whom we love. For instance, we would not have any sympathy. In fact, a parent who gives a 12-year-old son a car, we would think that's madness. Why would you give a child a car? He's going to kill himself, surely. No, we give gifts that we know will enhance, will benefit the person who receives the gift, because it's the expression of our love. And so God has given us gifts. And we're told each gift is given according to the ability of the one receiving the gift. In other words, we're not overloaded. We have enough for what our destiny is. In other words, God gives us gifts so that we can achieve eternal life. We give gifts, as I said, according to ability, according to the needs of the person. And we will give simple gifts at the beginning, and as the friendship matures, as love increases, we give greater and greater gifts. And so when we look at salvation history, we see that God at the beginning gave to our first parents life. He also gave them a commandment. And in this commandment, they were to express gratitude for the gift God had given them. And the expression of that gratitude would be by obedience. Do not eat of the fruit. If they had obeyed, they would have shown that they truly loved God in return for the gifts he had given them. If you love me, keep my commandments. They didn't keep the commandments. They failed. God, however, did not stop loving. What did he do next? He promised another gift, a great gift. And that would be a woman and her seed. Who would avenge the injury done to the human race? By the serpent. The fullness of time comes and God now gives a great gift. His only begotten son. The one whom he loves. This is my son, the beloved. You are my son. My favor rests on you. To whom did he give this gift? To a woman? On, he gave it to her on behalf, so she would receive it on behalf of the whole human race, on our behalf. So she received this gift. What was require, required of her was to believe. Blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And what was required also was obedience. Let it be done to me according to your word. And so with these two, our blessed lady returns love for the love she had received. 
in return for the great gifts God had given her, that of her creation, of her immaculate conception, and all the other gifts of grace that he bestowed on her, she responded with, yes, let it be done to me as you will. I will obey. And so she received love in her heart first, and love became incarnate in her womb. The word was made flesh. And so she gives birth to the Savior. God had given to this woman motherhood. And she had given to God a human nature. Our Lord, in his 30, 34 years here on earth, went about doing good pouring out his gifts of grace on all those who came to him. Those who came to him came because they had a need. My servant is sick at home. Lord, that I may see. Lord, that I may walk. Our Lord had compassion on the crippled. He had compassion on the demoniacs and he freed them. He gave them gifts. When they were hungry, he fed them at no charge. He poured out gifts. But we, ungrateful, ever ungrateful, crucified him. Did he stop loving us? Far from it. On the contrary, he gave even more gifts. Notice that we give the smaller gifts first. And as love matures, as it grows, we give greater and greater gifts. Isn't that how lovers behave? When they first meet, they will give little tokens of their affection. And as the love matures, they give greater and greater tokens. And these tokens don't have to have any intrinsic value such as a handkerchief. We think of sometimes uh, uh, things that happen, for instance, during war, when a young married couple, or they don't even need to be young, they're married, and the husband has to go to war. His wife perhaps will give him a handkerchief as a token, so he'll remember her. He might give her a photograph, so you remember. So we give gifts of greater value as the love matures. And so, for our Lord, on the cross, he began, on his journey to the cross, he began to give gifts, the things that he held most dear to himself. And the first was the gift of love, which is always ready to forgive. He forgave. He gave pardon. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. He gave an excuse as well. He gave away paradise. This day, he said to the thief, this very day you will be with me in paradise. He gave it away. And don't forget, he's given these gifts to all of us, not just those who crucified him physically on Calvary 2,000 years ago, not just those, but all of us. Father, forgive. He didn't just promise paradise to that thief, Dismas, Saint Dismas, but to all of us, he's promised paradise. You will be with me, but what do we have to do? We have to do exactly what the good thief did. We are only paying for our sins, but this man is innocent. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That's all we need to do. Ask him to remember us. Even in the midst of our sins, he will remember us and he will forgive. And so he's given two things. And notice the difference in value. First, forgiveness, and then even more, the first gift is no punishment. 
The second gift, paradise, is a reward. And then what does he do? The third gift, the one closest to himself, the one he loved the most, he gave her away. Woman, behold your children, behold your son. He gave her away to his son, to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that moment, the disciple accepted that gift and took her to his home, which is what we should be doing constantly. We should seek to have our most blessed lady, our queen and our mother, in our home. And where is our home, if not first and foremost, in our heart? This is in our heart that we keep those whom we love. And then when he had finished giving away everything that he loved, everything that he possessed, he gave the one gift on which all others depended, his life. A man can have no greater love than to give his life for his friends. And he breathed out his last. Everything is given so that we can have eternal life. When we receive a gift, we accept it as a token of the love of the giver of the gift. When a friendship is broken, what do we do? We often discard the gift. Because a friendship is broken. But our friendship with God cannot be broken and will not be broken by God. It can only be broken by ourselves. And so we have to be very careful not to throw away those most precious gifts he has given us, especially the gift of his mother, because she's ever ready to help us. He has not given us a dead gift, an inert gift. He has given us a very powerful intercessor, his own mother. And so every time we pray, we should turn our minds to the Lord. And we should ask him to help us to understand the greatness of his love for us. And that, of course, can really and truly happen when we realize that this is the greatness of his love is a person the second person of the Blessed Trinity, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that we receive this gift of our Lord through the most blessed virgin, his mother. Therefore, our gratitude, whilst it's to God who is the giver of all gifts, necessarily we must turn to her as well and thank her, thank her from the depths of our heart for having been faithful and obedient, and then ask in her in turn to help us, to give us the grace that we also might be faithful and obedient. When Our Lady appeared at, last, at Rudebach in 1830, she appeared as Our Lady, immediate tricks of all graces. And in, is, 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 you, in the miraculous medal, you see the imprint of that apparition. She stands with her hands opened and the rays which come out of her fingers, appear to come out of her fingers in the image. But when St. Catherine Labore saw her, on Our Lady's hands there were rings. On each, there were three rings on each finger. And each ring had a gem. And out of these gems, these jewels, came light. Some of the jewels, some of the gems, gave out no light. Our Lady explained. She says, the light that you see coming from the rings, from the, from the rings, these are the graces that are poured out, the graces people ask for. Those that do not have any light are the graces that people forget to ask for. She is a mediatrix of all graces, 
she will give all the gifts necessary for our salvation. Saint Louis Marie de Montfort says of Our Lady that she is the mediatrix of grace. Christ is the mediator of redemption. He has satisfied divine justice. Our Lady mediates divine mercy. And so to she who is the mediatrix of all gifts, all graces, because grace and gift are the same thing. She who is the mediatrix of all graces, of every gift, let us ask her to obtain for us those graces in which we stand most in need. And she will answer. Because she gave us her son. Her gift to us was her son. Her gift to us is exactly the same as God the Father's gift to us, her only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Mediatrix of all graces, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.